All right. So we have one question. Chris, why did we not set the GCS when importing um, our terrain? Okay. So the the data that I was bringing forward, I didn't change the geographic coordinate system between with the data that the D10 was created in to the coordinate system, which my DGN file and open roast designer set to. Um, so it's not necessarily if you're not going to do any kind of transformations. If I had a different uh, GCS between when it was uh, created in the first project versus now, it, I would need to set that and it would do it would translate that data. I see one question. How do you load the civil tools? I don't see that in my ORD. So if you don't see it on the backstage, that's something we've recently added to the backstage. So it depends on what version you're in. I'm running the, the latest version, 10.10. So if you're in like 10.9, you might not see those. And the, but the civil file manager is still available. For example, this tool that I'm running here was available in um, several versions prior. But it, you would access it through creating a shortcut. It's a, isn't it a it's an executable you run from the program data folder, correct? Program data program file maybe program files folder. There's the utilities are are delivered, but there are executables that you'd have to look for. I also want to just point out that once you upgrade a file, you can see um, the schema version and what product it's assigned to, and everything gets a backup so that. SS um, 10 product now will be in ORD. We had another question come in about um, level retention uh, with level names. So the way that I imported the the information, it was all brought in from the DTM. And the, the link between the DTM and XIN only really happened when you displayed that information. It used the style and the symbology to display so that the level information wasn't stored inside of like a, a break line or anything like that in the DTM. If you want to maintain the level, so if you display the graphics from SS2 and you go and you view your features, it will retain the levels for those graphics. And so you could use that or utilize that for your terrain creation. So you could isolate your levels and then you could import your data from graphics and whatnot. To, to have it bring that data in. But as soon as you assign a feature definition uh, to featureize that element, then it's going to change the level and it's going to be retained by what is set up in the feature definition and the feature symbology element template. Another thing, um, a couple of people have asked this. Uh, a lot of this that we are presenting is kind of based on some migration videos that are going to be on our communities page. Uh, there are four really good videos that go through data migration that's going to be uh, from Geopack SS2 forward, Inroads SS2 forward, Geopack using OpenRoads technology, moving those SS4 and SS10 projects forward, and then Inroads as well. Uh, so there are some more in-depth uh, that are going to go through a couple more step-by-step -step processes on bringing that data in. And migrating that up and and a couple more options that you have uh, for for bringing your data, migrating it up into OpenRoast Designer. And I'm just pulling up the wiki article so you can see it started with 10.8. And so you can see they there's four presentations and they start with a specific file format or version. And when you click on any of them. They give you the timeline at the bottom. So if you're interested in a very specific item, first we mentioned drainage, you can jump to the 27 minute mark and start that process. And then, you know, if you need to go back and look at the ITL remapper, that's there. We also have, um, as, as things have changed, even since these videos were put out at 10.8, now we're at 10.10. As, as we've developed new tools or we've taken tools, and we've um, added them to the backstage. You know, we've created videos like here's feature migration that will give you a good ITIL remapper video right there. One of the questions the user had issues with the DTM import, Chris, failing when he follows the process that we kind of did. Any troubleshooting tips for that? Yeah, so 
since we have multiple ways to bring the data forward, I would definitely just try a couple of different options. Okay, importing the terrain should just bring in the triangulated surface. And you can do that through the DTM or through a land XML. So you may want to try to export your DTM to a land XML, run the same process. Again, you can import information from graphics. You know, so if you have your graphics, your linear features and spot features that are um, graphics in a 3D DGN file, you can create a terrain from that. That does take a little bit longer to process, but but it would rule and tie those graphics to that. So those are a couple of things I would try just to try to get that data brought forward. So. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.